Hey, what's going on everybody? Will Hamilton here, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite games, Rock, Paper, Scissors. I'm very good at it. If you ever see me on the street, feel free to challenge me. I will accept your challenge. Now, in terms of the men's game, the top of the men's game, I think Rock, Paper, Scissors is a pretty accurate description of the dynamic we've got up there. You got Rafa, who's the rock, right, big and strong, and Rock beats Scissors. That's, of course, Roger, and Scissors, very precise, very accurate. I think that's a good description of Roger. And then Scissors beats Paper. That's Novak. Now, why is Novak Paper? I don't know. I got to make this analogy work. So, Novak, you are Paper. And, of course, Paper beats Rock. Novak has gotten the best of Rafa the last couple times they've played. So, I think this is a pretty, you know, pretty clear or pretty good kind of analogy, I guess you could say, for the, uh, for the men's game. You could say that, you know, maybe Roger beating Novak, scissors, paper might not be totally the case because while Roger did beat Novak the last time they played at the French Open, that great match, prior to that, Novak had, had beaten Roger a couple times. But in that French Open match, Roger made a, made a very nice adjustment, actually, that allowed him to get the, uh, get the best of Novak, kind of put himself back at the top of the leaderboard. So I think, you know, you could, you could make an argument there, but I think it's pretty clear uh, and pretty accurate nonetheless. So what I want to do is talk about this dynamic in terms of an FYB concept, defense, neutral, offense, DNO for short. I'm not going to explain this concept in detail right now. I know many of you all are familiar with it, but the basic gist is you want to transition up this spectrum. When you're on defense, you want to neutralize the rally. When you're in a neutral rally, you want to transition up to offense. And when you're jumping from neutral to offense all the time, you're going to be winning most of those matches. You're, I mean, you're basically going to be winning. Um, and when you're neutral to defense or just on defense, you're going to be losing, you know, you're basically going to lose those matches there. So whenever you are trying to jump from neutral up to offense, I drew pretty well on the lefty, so the righty is always, the righty drawing is always suspect. Whenever you're trying to make this jump, you typically set up a play. You have a series of shots that you kind of work through that get you from neutral up to offense. That's certainly the case at the Pro Tour. If you aren't doing this right now, you, you certainly should. You shouldn't just be out there kind of hitting aimlessly. You should say to yourself, here's my sequence of shots that gets me in control of the point. So I've kind of drawn this up here. I've you know, drawn one, two, three, four. Obviously, your sequence could be fewer shots, more shots, but four is, uh, is the number I went with. And when we talk about this sequence and we talk about the sequences these guys are using, I've written two things here, playing into a weapon and then comfort with style of play. So in the case of Federer here, his sequence to get on offense plays straight into Rafa's weapon. And his sequence is, he doesn't really use it as much against Rafa anymore, but in the past uh, he used it all the time and it's what he uses against righties. He will go backhand to backhand with a righty, throw in some topspin, throw in some slice, and that will elicit a ball he can run around. So if this is run around and hit an inside out, inside in forehand. So if this is the inside out or inside in forehand here, this is where he's throwing in that variety with the backhand. And that is again what allows him to jump from neutral up to offense. Well, with Rafa, all these shots are going straight into his weapon, straight into his wheelhouse, straight into that lefty forehand. So when Federer gets into a protracted rally with Rafa, the backhand to forehand, that puts him squarely on defense there. So this is not a winning proposition for Fed. He's figured this out. And now when he gets into a backhand to forehand exchange, he basically tries to check out at the first reasonable opportunity, go down the line, try and get his forehand to Rafa's, excuse me, backhand there. So that's one way that your sequence of shots can kind of play into this whole DNO equation, obviously in, in a way that, that you don't like. In a, in a negative fashion. The other is if you've got, you're playing into someone, if your style of play rather, your sequence specifically is no problem for your opponent. Your opponent is comfortable with that style of play. And that's what you got with Rafa versus Novak. Because Novak likes guys who hit standard balls in terms of the pace and just the speed, right? He, he, you know, Novak is not as big of a fan of a ton of variety. He likes just kind of to get it out there and bang away with his opponent. So that's, of course, what Rafa does. Rafa doesn't have too much subtlety in his game. And his game is, for the most part, get the ball on the forehand side, my forehand to a righty's backhand. 
and then you know I'm good to go. I'm going to break the guy down. The other play that Rafa uses when you get a down the line backhand to backhand exchange, a righty's backhand to a lefty's backhand, is Rafa will run around that down the line shot to hit a forehand. Well, neither one of those plays hurts Novak too much. He's comfortable with that. So what ends up happening is Rafa will go through this whole sequence, which normally allows him to jump from neutral up to offense. But against Novak, because Novak's comfortable with it, Rafa just stays on neutral, stays in neutral. And this is a situation where you can often overhit. You got to he- keep hitting bigger and bigger to try and get the guy on the defensive, try and get yourself up to offense. But with Novak, it's not working, and that's why Novak has been able to beat Rafa the last couple times they have played. Now. This used to be the case with Fed as well, where at the Aussie Open and then Indian Wells, Fed was hitting a pretty standardized shot. He was hitting, he was coming over his backhand, putting a a lot of pace on it, not too much variety, and Novak got the best of him. Novak, you know, was able to get into a groove, able to get a rhythm. Well, at the French Open, Roger changed that up a little bit on the backhand side. First, he might go with the pace. That would be the circle. Then he might throw in kind of a topspin moon ball, get some air under it. We'll use that as square, all geometric shapes coming out. And then, you know, the slice might be the triangle there. And all that variety actually gave him the shot he was looking for, whether it was the inside out, inside in, forehand, or just a short ball that he could step in and rip. So that variety here facilitated the jump up to offense there. And that's why, again, I think, you know, Roger is, is... on the top of the leaderboard with Novak, at least, in, uh, you know, right now, right now being August 10th, I believe. So, important distinction to understand here, because if your style of play, your game plan, your sequence plays straight into someone's weapon, that's bad news bears big time, because that means you're going to be on defense pretty much instantly like that. You know, you go into the guy's, the shot he's looking for, bam, you're on defense. So that's a situation where you really need a big change in your tactics and just completely stay away from that, from that particular shot. You're going to have to alter this sequence here. That is what Roger has done because it's simply he couldn't find a way to make it work against Rafa. Now, when we're talking about the comfort with the style of play, well, the sequence might not be super effective in terms of jumping from neutral up to offense, but it's not going to get you instantly into this cycle where you're down on defense and you're just trying to neutralize, but you're just stuck in this rut over here. With a comfort, you know, if your opponent is comfortable with your style of play, it's more a situation where you're going to have trouble transitioning up. You're going to be on neutral more frequently than you'd like, and of course your opponent's going to have an opportunity to go on offense, put you back on defense there. But it's not this like doomsday scenario where, you know, you're going to get hurt instantly. You know, you, you, you have a little flexibility there to kind of try and figure it out and keep that broad framework in terms of this sequence here and maybe make a couple tweaks. And again, the, the tweak Fed made was just variety. He went away from that standard ball and he threw in a lot more variety and that worked for him. That allowed him to get the best of Novak. Rafa, of course, is, chill, is still trying to figure this out. He's trying to work in some form of variety. In Rome, he moonballed off the backhand a little bit. When he got pulled wide at Wimbledon, he kind of changed his, his placement a little bit. So he's trying to work on it. He's trying to figure it out, but he hasn't cracked the code yet, so to speak. But I thought this was, you know, I think rock, paper, scissors is just a kind of a cool concept to describe the top of the men's game. But I also, I also think it's instructive with playing into a weapon versus comfort with style of play because there is a distinction in terms of DNO and sort of how quickly you can get hurt. And it's very instructive for a recreational player to be aware of this because if you understand what's going on and you say, okay, I'm losing the match, but why am I losing this match? Is it because I'm giving my opponent, you know, that pitch right down the plate, right into their weapon, that thing's going out of the park? Or is it more a situation where my opponent's just kind of comfortable with what I'm doing and I'm not really hurting them too much, but, you know, they might not be just knocking me off the court or really hurting me too bad either. That's, again, where you kind of can keep your strategy but tweak it a little bit so that it's a little bit more successful. So, again, important concept to understand because you decide, do I need to toss out my current strategy or do I need to just modify it a little bit? So, great, uh, you know, very instructive. I think the pro game in this instance is very instructive for recreational players. So with that in mind, I'm going to wrap this video. I enjoyed putting it together for you. Um, If you'd like to challenge me to rock, paper, scissors, please do so 
in the comments below and I'll try and invent some way for us to play over the internet. But uh, other than that, just you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video and this analysis. Let me know if it helped you. And just let me know if you have any comments. I look forward to reading them. So with that in mind, I'm going to sign off, but I will see you guys in the next video.